Hello, everyone, and welcome again. We're at stlouisdays.net here with Phil, brother man, hey. fellow Windows Phone fan, uh, and just overall Windows fan. Um, you're here again this year, uh, giving awesome presentations, and um, you were with uh, Inter Internology. Thank yep. you for saying that for me. Um, so, uh, what keeps you coming back to this conference for St. Louis Days of Atlanta? Well, it all started, um, I went to Washington University, so I actually lived here for seven years, and I actually just happened to stumble across the first one they did, but like a week before it happened, and that was the one they held at WashU. Nice. And uh, so I reached out to organizers and said, hey, I'm a WashU alumni. Um, I know it's too late now, but if you run this again, I'd love to come out. And I came out the next year, and it was small. It was the first year they had it here. Uh, it was fairly small, um, but really enjoyed the, the location, the, the people that come to it, the attendees. Of course, being back in St. Louis is always cool. Sure. Well, St. Charles technically, but I get <laughs> to go through St. Louis to get here. Close enough. Um, and actually, I just started recruiting speakers. So if you look at the speaker roster, a good third of them I recruited for this show, and we just wow. all keep coming back. So That's awesome. It's been a really good show. And, and really good presentations, too. I mean, right. you know, some, some uh, you know, we've been to other conferences and all this other kind of stuff. We are always happy with the quality of the speakers that come here. So yeah, no, really it's an awesome here. show. Yeah, it really is. Uh, and, and the people who come here are, are, are phenomenal and always very embracing. And, and I love how they, they approach and, and they, they talk with the speakers. They ask good questions and, yep. and all that stuff. And, and I know you guys like that. You right, know, absolutely. Uh, coming up to you guys, asking you questions and, and figuring out that sort of thing. And even the other speakers being able to bounce, you know, stuff off of those guys. I mean, you know, Lord, the, the talent that's here, you know, sometimes you're just like, wow. You know? Right. <laughs> this is awesome. So um, what was your talk uh, and what was your talk about? And tell us a little bit of some of the highlights of, of what you're talking about. Yeah, sure. So um, yesterday, Mike Eaton and I gave a full day workshop on XAML. Nice. So we, um, I've been giving Windows 8 workshops and Windows Phone workshops for a long time, and finally Microsoft is talking about WPF again. And yeah. WPF never went away, but yeah. if you talk to Microsoft Marketing, it appeared like it went away. Right. And so it's becoming a big topic again. And so what Microsoft I did. Microsoft has a marketing department? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, they do. It's just, um, yeah, anyway. I got to gig them all. Mo moving on. Yep. Um, so we decided to focus just on XAML. Uh -huh. Right, uh, especially with universal apps where the XAML is the same Absolute, across yeah. uh, Windows Phone and WinRT or Windows 8, Metro apps for Windows Store, whatever the hell we're calling it. Heck, we're calling it these days. That works for me. Um, but really just focusing on the raw XAML. One, one right. thing that I've found through my years, and I've done a tub, ton of WPF, a lot of Windows 8 work, and now I'm getting more and more into Windows Phone work, is that the XAML learning curve is pretty steep. Yeah. You know, and everybody says, oh, well, you know, it's just it's, stacks and grids. How yeah, can how hard can it, can it be, be right? Yeah, I you know, love that. Um, so we spent a lot of time just on the foundational part, and we had we had about thirty people in the workshop yesterday, which is a lot more than I expected. It was really good, and half of them had been working with XAML and stuck around and actually came up to us at lunchtime and said that was a great foundation. They learned stuff even though they've been working with XAML for a while. That's awesome. And then the afternoon, I live coded for two hours. <laughs> just said, hey, what do you want to see, right? There you know, you oh, let's do MVVM and how do we start and how do we build it. Um, and I did it all by hand, and then Mike Eaton jumped in and said, all right, let's use a framework that's awesome. and see how that's different, but you still really have to understand the core. Right. Um, so that was good. This morning I gave a talk on JavaScript for C-sharp developers, and uh, that actually I wrote because I did a lot of WinJS work, and prior to doing all the WinJS work, I had been using jQuery, and so I knew JavaScript. I knew how to do dollar sign, sure. left paren, right paren. Right, right, right. And what I found is, though, even though there's you know semicolons and angle brackets, there's some real subtle differences between the way JavaScript and C Sharp work. Right. And if you don't understand them, debugging's a nightmare. And yeah, you you're just gonna get errors all over. Yeah, you're just gonna get errors all over the place, and Why it, it should this it should be working this way, should you know. Be resolving this uh, way. You know, for example, if you have the word false, okay, it evaluates the true because it's a non-empty string. There you right, go. the word in quotes and right, just right. weird things like that, right. you know. And so it really talks about the pitfalls. Of the things yeah. you stay away from, and that's always been a popular session. You know, I, I, I like the possibilities of WinJS, of where it can really go, especially with, like I said, uh, and other talks with other people, the w the announcements on Wednesday and, and different stuff that's coming down the pipe right. with, with more JavaScript and HTML5 and all this other kind of stuff, integration and stuff. And I'm, I'm excited about that sort of thing. I'm excited about uh, the openness and, and hearing about more, but also... Um, uh, speaking to that uh, shared project stuff, uh, that that's really cool, and that's the future, right? That's the, what we're going to be doing. It's not necessarily going to be uh, this um, uh, uh, issue of ecosystem wars or something. It's not really going to matter because, I mean, you're going to be able to get that kind of experience across uh, your different uh, devices and platforms. 
Right. So uh, that that's what the, the future looks very exciting, and 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 I really like working with XAML. I, I think it's, a, it's it is a lot of fun, and there there are a, a lot more ins and outs to it. A lot of really neat little subtle things you can do with it that that I really like. Um, uh, and the portable class libraries that is something that, that is the that is the future of development. You know, I mean, to put everything in there so you don't have to continue to write back and forth and. And do that. Uh, so I'm I'm very excited about all that stuff. So uh, what uh, are uh, what are some of the um, the key uh, uh, talking points that you have not only for the uh, the talk that you had today, but the one that you're going to have tomorrow? So the one tomorrow. So today, the, really, my my key talking point and that's the JavaScript for C sharp developers is um, you know get the book JavaScript: The Good Parts. Okay. Um, by Douglas Crockford, and because he really does go through you know, all the pitfalls, right? Okay. JavaScript was not a design language. It actually emerged from the primordial ooze that was the early days of the internet. Right. And it runs everywhere, so you have to know it, right? Even if you're a, a .NET developer, you're still gonna be doing JavaScript in some sort if at you do any point. web work, right. Right? right? And even if you look at Microsoft Azure Mobile Services, they supported JavaScript before they supported C Sharp in there. So you're gonna have to know JavaScript. So really the, the key that I want people to learn from that is there are differences and they're subtle, and the best thing to do is get a really good resource like Doug, Douglas Crockford's book to, to really just know them, right, and yeah. to learn them. Because it's going to make debugging so much easier, and hopefully you won't have the bugs in the first place. And not want you to break your machines right. constantly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. um, so tomorrow I'm doing a Universal Apps talk. And Universal Apps, it's interesting that Microsoft calls them Universal App because it's just universal across Windows platforms. I know, I know. It's not universal yeah. across all mobile. Ooh, um, I never but, thought of that. But it really, is a, yeah. it really is a breakthrough um, for people developing for Windows 8 or store, or, or for you know Windows 8 store or for uh, Windows Mobile, or, right. sorry Windows Phone. I'm dating myself by calling old terms. Oh, uh, that's and okay because they kind of bounce back to that name on some of their um, uh, like the company who makes it. It's right. Win uh, Windows. You're yeah, like, it does. Me with that. <laughs> um, so, and you mentioned portable class libraries, and they're a great solution. But the problem with PCLs is you have to worry about least common denominator. Yeah. Right, and with the shared project structure of a universal app project, you have a Windows Phone project, you have a Windows project, and then you have a shared project, Love and that it. code actually gets hoisted into the others. Right. So, you know, for example, all my view models, yeah. right, uh, they're all in the shared. All, all of my data access, why well, that's actually in a separate project typically. Uh, but the outcome of that is not three binaries, it's right. two binaries, right? right? You get your Windows Store binaries and your Windows Phone binaries, exactly. um, but all that code is shared, so you really are writing it once, and it's very specific for the for what you are trying to do in the .NET framework that you're targeting, whereas a PCL, you really have to go to base class, or the, you know, the lowest common denominator type thing. And not that PCLs are bad, um, it's just a different problem that's trying to solve. Right, and, and, and the whole point of that shared folder is to reduce time spent on trying to write for right. those different things. And, and we learned that, and, and we, we also uh, talked a lot about that too. So um, uh, we're excited about, uh, about the future of the universal app model. Um, and hopefully that uh, brings more, um, you know, like we were talking about before, more financial apps, more more of those apps uh, that are missing on the Windows Phone site so that it can be more of a player and stuff like that. So um, if people want to find out more about you and, and, and what you're doing, where can they do that? Yeah, so certainly the easiest way to get a hold of me is on Twitter. I'm Ski Medic, S-K-I-M-E-D-I-C. -E Ski is in snow ski, medic is in paramedic. And I'm a retired firefighter paramedic. I still volunteer with the National Ski Patrol. I, I adopted Ski Medic some time ago because nobody can say or pronounce my last name anyway. <laughs> right. uh, so I just go by Ski Actually, Medic. That's true. That uh, but if you go to um, about.me slash Ski Medic, you have links to my blog, to my podcast that I run, which is Hallway Conversations. You got Phenomenal, links to my work. By the way. Oh, thank you I very really much. Like, I like those a lot. Um, so I, I'm the principal architect for Internology. We do a lot of stuff with WPF, with natural user interfaces. We're doing a lot of work with Connect, things like that. So you can find more about that on my blog and at about me slash schematic. Awesome. Well, it's always a pleasure Great. to talk to you, man. Thanks. You're Thanks for having me. Wicked smart. And we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Great. Thank you.